Good morning, ma. Good morning. Uh, what's your name, ma? I'm Molika Tkinoshi. Okay. How long have you been suffering from this stroke challenge? Last year, August. 29th of August, last year. That is about a year plus now. Yes, it's Okay. And you have been taking some medications? Uh, many, many. Different, different kind of medication I've been taking. Well, how, um, what are their effects? Have they had any effects on you? At all. Once I take it, it's still as if it's going to work, but later it will just drop. It will drop. Okay, ever since you come across STC 30, how, how do you feel now? I'm feeling all right, all right. Even I'm lifting the hand, everything. I'm walking without using a stick. Without using your stick? Yes. Wow, this is your stick, right? This is my stick. Uh, okay, that's a very good one. Can you lift up that hand now? Yes. Wow. Very soon you are going to be very very free. Yes. How many packs did you take for just for I just this? Two packs. Two packs. Yes. Well, just in two weeks. When two weeks. Um, in how many days did you start getting the effects? The fourth day. The fourth day you yes. be, you started lifting up your hands. Oh, my hand. yes. Wow. Uh, and since ever since you had that uh, this challenge, you've not been able to lift it. I and you you you, you cannot walk alone. At all. Without stick, I can't. Now you can walk. I can walk. You now. can stand up. Can you stand up and let us see? Wow. You see, this is great. This is great. Wow. <laughs> Look at daddy. Daddy is clapping. What are you going to what 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 would you advise other people out there? They should come and buy STC and buy 30. STC. Uh -huh. and, see the wonderful and see the results. Yes. You see? Very, very you see, good. I, we want people to know about this, yes. this drug. That's it. Very good. God bless you. God Amen. bless you. God bless you. You. you just continue with it and you will get your strength totally. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you, ma. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, well, I call it a mantra because it's, it summarizes in a, just a very simple way what's so important about the human body. Everybody has stem cells. Everybody uses stem cells. Everybody uses stem cells every day. And stem cells work, and they work every time. Well, first, you have to understand what stem cells do. This is physiology at work. This is nature at its best. In fact, if you think of it, how did we survive? How do human beings manage day in and day out to survive? Because all the cells in our body are constantly dying. We put up a good fight, we have an immune system, we have all types of defenses in the body to protect us. But eventually, the cells die. So we have to literally restore, rebuild, replace, replenish those cells. And so the repair mechanism must of necessity be there. It's like having a war where, where souls are dying on the front. If you don't have troops to replenish the front lines, you've got a problem. And that's what the stem cells do. They literally provide, in a sense, a, a constant supply of new cells for all the various tissues of the body. But this evolution has really followed a pattern. The pattern was this. We were persuaded that since cells make organs, organs make tissues, tissues make bodies, if we get good healthy cells, we'll make healthy organs which will form healthy tissues and healthy bodies. So the focus was what could we do for the cells to feed them, give them what they need and they'll be healthy and then they'll produce healthy organs and healthy tissues and healthy bodies. What we didn't stop to think about was this, and this is really evolution, that now we've come to realize that look, you could keep feeding the troops, supplying the troops, arming the troops, equipping the troops, providing for the troops, but they'll die. And eventually you need new troops. You need some way of replenishing, repairing, restoring the activity on the front line. And that's why stem cells, in a sense, is the pierce the resistance. For me, it is the leading or the cutting edge of nutrition and supplementation today, undoubtedly. Why? Stem cells are held in the bone marrow. If you think of it, you could consider the cells to be held by adhesive in the bone marrow. We went to India for surgery. After doing two surgeries of prostate cancer, on successful ones. So I had to go to India to do the surgery. There they did four surgeries for me, prostate surgery and the surgery. And virtually, I came back to Nigeria. But only in December last year, 
my prostate came back, it started to relapse. And uh, just about two months ago, so I came across somebody while I was in Lourdes. They want to give me another surgery. I said, no, at my age, I'm 70. I cannot do this surgery again. I'm afraid of uh, um, anesthesia. So he introduced me to these drugs and I bought two. In fact, on the fifth day, I started realizing that I could really very well. Yeah. <laughs> one funny thing is that, aside from that, I thought I used it for post trait but I realized that I had a lump in my, in my, on my lap and it disappeared. <laughs> Last was on my arm. Well, it disappeared. Hmm. It so, and as a matter of fact, people kept telling me each time I went to church that you look younger. I'm here. Yes. Yes. And I'm sure so, even someone said I look like that. Yes, yes. Said I look like yes. Time, we will bring the change that so many scientists and researchers, doctors and innovators patients and loved ones have hoped for and fought for these past eight years. We will lift the ban on federal funding for promising embryonic stem cell research. <laughs> At this moment, uh, the full promise of stem cell research remains unknown, and it should not be overstated. But scientists believe these tiny cells may have the potential to help us understand and possibly cure some of our most devastating diseases and conditions. To regenerate a severed spinal cord and lift someone from a wheelchair. To spur insulin production and spare a child from a lifetime of needles. To treat Parkinson's cancer, heart disease, and others that affect millions of Americans and the people who love them. From life-saving vaccines to pioneering cancer treatments to the sequencing of the human genome, that is the story of scientific progress in America. When government fails to make these investments, opportunities are missed. Promising avenues go unexplored. Some of our best scientists leave for other countries that will sponsor their work. And those countries may surge ahead of ours in the advances that transform our lives. But after much discussion, debate, and reflection, the proper course has become clear. The majority of Americans from across the political spectrum and from all backgrounds and beliefs have come to a consensus that we should pursue this research, that the potential it offers is great, and with proper guidelines and strict oversight, the perils can be avoided. That is a conclusion with which I agree. And that is why I'm signing this executive order, and why I hope Congress will act on a bipartisan basis to provide further support for this research. All right, there we go.